Admiral's Log. Our fleet is still undergoing repairs, and we've had to rely heavily on joint operations with our allies. While some may see this as a weakness, I see it as a strength. Our allies have proven themselves to be reliable and effective partners. The French Navy in particular has been impressive in their performance. Their expertise in naval warfare has been invaluable to us, and they've helped us to achieve some significant victories. Joint operations have not been without their challenges, of course. There's always communications issues and differences in tactics and strategies to contend with. However, our ability to work together with our allies demonstrates our commitment to the collective defense of our interests. We're stronger together than we are apart. And yet, I remain a little reserved when it comes to running joint operations. Today's allies can be tomorrow's enemies. The more we work with them, the more they know about our strengths and weaknesses. I've therefore ordered that no foreign sailors are allowed to board our most advanced ships, especially the Divine Broadside class ships. We cannot have their engineering secrets get into the hands of any foreign power, friendly or otherwise. Hey guys, still here and welcome to episode 45. It's a bit of a weird way to start a, an episode right in the middle of a battle, but I have finally found them. I have finally found the mystical beast. The transport that is armed with a torpedo launcher. The Brits apparently have gotten so desperate that they've even started arming their transports, not just with guns, I've seen that before, but with torpedo launchers. These are 19 inch, so they're relatively small. 64 knot torpedo launchers. Um, and they're actually almost called the Kinugasa of guard. Uh, I'm engaging a couple of escort ships here. I already sunk all the transports. And all of a sudden, one of these transports goes, Ha ha, here's a torpedo. So, uh, yeah, they exist. And it's really interesting to actually see those things out and about. Uh, Kinugasa, because of her evasive maneuver, might still take a torpedo. Come on, swing that ass around. Yeah, well, she might be fine. There we go. Uh, but yeah, this is the first time for me that I'm actually seeing a torpedo launcher mounted on a non... Well... Mostly non-warship, because generally the AI, well, supposedly they know how to do it, I just have never seen them do it. So actually seeing and being on the receiving end of these things is a really interesting experience. As for this battle, uh, it is not that special, I'm just sinking a convoy and what I'm really doing is using, once again, the legendary French Sultan, um, as well as the Kinugasa. And a... oops. I think it's a Russian destroyer. The Bedovyi. Armed with a couple of uh, fairly ancient 5.3s. I'm sorry, 5.4s and a bunch of torpedo launchers. But really the star of the show is the Kinugasa. Or perhaps the star of the show is the torpedo armed transport. Anyway, as for the campaign at large, uh, the situation is such that I'm still trying to make peace with the British and the Austro-Hungarians, but it seems that diplomatic relationships, negotiations, they're just not really working out. Uh, both parties seem tired of the war, both parties seem to want to put an end to the conflict, yet neither party really knows how to go about that. So because of that, I'm still trying to hunt down convoys. Uh, I've even lost a battle cruiser. And they have managed to badly, badly damage a battleship. I really want to get a new type of battleship. Now, I know in the previous episode I said it's going to be tricky because it doesn't fit. Um, the ships are, or the shipyards are very, very busy. And it's going to be hard to squeeze in yet another construction for a battleship. But I find that the 11-inch guns that I currently have on some of the ships, or sorry, the 12-inchers on one of the battleships, they're just not good enough anymore. They don't cut it anymore. It does seem like the British, despite having ancient ships, and same for the Austro-Hungarians, they do have some newer models. And those newer models are extremely capable of very quickly wiping out large portions of my hit point pool on some of my battleships. Whereas the 12-inch guns, um, they don't quite cut it anymore. They don't really hit as hard as they used to because it seems that the AI has armored up. And as they did that, my shells just don't do as much damage as they once did. The Kinugasas, or the, the, the Aso class, Kinugasa, still a fantastic ship. This thing almost always delivers. 
Uh, so far, I don't believe they've ever not performed. So I'm not really concerned about these. I would love to have more of them and potentially have them with 10 or maybe even 11 inch guns. But for now, they just, they perform. They do what I want them to do, which is go after the enemy, put either high explosive or armor piercing shells on target, uh, depending very much on the threat. Of course, as I say that, they refuse to fire. There we go. <clears throat> um, oh, damn it. I think the game briefly slowed down, didn't allow my guns to fire as the torpedoes were being calculated or something like that. That was weird. Anyway, these guys, uh, just a solid, solid heavy cruiser. It's such a classic build. It's an APXY format with a secondary 5 inch and secondary 1.1s. It just works. Every single campaign, these workhorses just do what I need them to do. So yeah, the Asos are safe, but I do need a new battleship. And to that end, I have prioritized the research of big guns in order to actually get those to get developed at as best a speed as I can, making sure I can get the best type of armament on those new battleships. I'm thinking 16 inches, uh, something pretty, oh, that was good, something pretty potent to allow for quick elimination of the enemy battleships. And especially with radar, I'm able to scout them out from far away and shoot them from far away. But, well, I would like Mark 4 inch guns. And for 16 inch guns, I don't have those yet. Nevertheless, I can start building them now and I can start getting the hulls built and refit them later. It's not necessarily the most efficient way of going about it because building a new ship and then having to refit it does take more time. But let's say I need to uh, build it for 30 months and then refit it for two. That's 32 months. If I wait a couple of months, um, let's say five or six until I have better guns, and then I start building for 32 months, I'm still going to be doing 38 months. So I'd rather do it in 32 than in 38 because it means I just save six months. And well, we're rapidly approaching 1937. The campaign only runs till 1950 or until I decide to end it early because the game simply doesn't allow you to play beyond 1950. So the situation, um, my shipyards are over cap, especially with ships constantly coming back for repairs. Thankfully, I'm able to uh, put the uh, Kasuga out to sea again. We're going to have <clears throat> the Amagiri out. There's a refit going on for a couple of light cruisers. And I still have a couple of suspended battleships. This is the problem. This is the Van Empire. It's the new 1935 broadside. Uh, Yamato is that new ship. Cl oh, never mind. I already have 16 new ships coming out. I just forgot about that because I never have the capacity to actually build them. Right. Nevertheless, what sort of research are we working on? What sort of guns can I expect? Because the game might go with... 18 inch mark 2 19 inch mark 2 19 inch mark or a 20 inch mark 2 before going to the 16 inch mark 4 i think it's going to be what do we get yeah we got 19 to 18 to so this could be 22 or 14 4 there doesn't seem to be much of a method to the madness but getting 16 inch threes is probably going to take a while as for the situation on the world map um, as has been expected, the area here around um, <clears throat> the Austria-Hungarians Austro -Hungarians is pretty dire. They do still have Slovenia. And they still have Croatia. And they got Bosnia and Herzegovina. Which is not getting invaded? No, I guess not. It's not getting invaded. My invasion force does seem to have been thwarted a bit. They're only 52%. They were a bit higher, I think. But we do need more men. And the defense here is pretty stubborn. The British, the once powerful British army, navy, down to 36 battleships, they're repairing 110 ships. So they definitely have more battleships out there, but they're currently using all the docks. And on top of that, they're building another 289. Still, I would like a piece... Treaty. I want to end this war. 
I do want to keep one war going at all times so I can get the funding. But, well, for now, and especially since I'm blockading the British, I would like to see if I can end that war. If it wasn't enough for me sinking part of the British Empire's navy, they seem to have some other issues all by themselves. You see, the British nation people are rebellious, and Wales is the first one to go. There's an uprising in Wales. Now, these things generally don't go well. Um, they will keep the British busy for a bit. And what I'm most confused about, but this is just the nature of the game, is how, despite losing 170 battleships, they're still growing their economy. They're still building 300 new ships. That shit just doesn't make sense. I know that the devs are working on 1.3. So not 1.29, but 1.3. There's a beta going on. I'm not going to touch that. Uh, they're working on implementing the weather system so that if the game says, hey, there's a storm, your ships are bobbing up and down. That's why they can't actually hit anything. That's now going to be visualized. And there are some other things. But for me, the economy, this just seems so random, so completely grabbed out of thin air without any basis that it just I don't know as a player it doesn't make sense yes I would like to see nice waves yes I would like to see my ships bobbing up and down in a storm sure but really <laughs> the whole situation with the economy does not get resolved I don't know anyway um, the shipyard can now handle 316,000 tons that has given me slightly more shipbuilding capacity. And yet, we're still not able to start building those new ships. Because they need a lot more. They need 90,000 tons. So, once again, I'm stuck waiting to refit and repair. And some of these repairs, thankfully, on the bigger ships are going to be done pretty quick. Even the Divine Broadside, down in two months. And she should be good to go once again. And meanwhile, we got a little convoy mission coming up. So let's have Maya and Banyo work together to take care of the battleship called the Suplingenberg. The Asomirgot class battleship, 162 million armed with 10 15 inch guns. So am I. I got 15 inch guns, but I just have 8 of them per ship. So between the two of these, that should not really be too much of a handle. Especially as I will most likely outspot the enemy. And then we're going to one shot some transports. I just have to be careful with those transports. Because if the British are mounting torpedoes on them, then perhaps their allies in the form of Austria-Hungary might be too. Here we go. Maya opening up against the enemy battleship, which seemingly has already taken some damage. Now, seeing as they are unable to detect my ships, I would like to make that last as long as possible. We're going to try and sail either away from them or on a course where it's going to be more difficult for them to do anything against me. They will be able to fire back with probably four 15-inch barrels, perhaps more if they go broadside. They're currently 17 and a half clicks out, and considering the armor as well as the angle, uh, I wasn't going to say I'm not expecting pens. I guess I should be reevaluating that position. HE might cause some damage. Um, it's tricky. At this angle, yes, you might get the occasional deck pen. Yeah, this is just partials. Okay, AP it is. APs also have a slower muzzle velocity, right? Yeah, they do. In case you're unaware, the muzzle velocity can be seen just with uh, damage AP, damage HE, ammo, etc. Muzzle velocity is how quickly a shell travels upon leaving the barrel, upon leaving the muzzle. And seeing as the shell is 621 meters per second, as opposed to HE, this means that the shells for a form a more uh, parabolic arc. They go up higher and then they crash down into the deck. The HE shells do that a little less. Um, they have a higher muzzle velocity of 713 meters per second. So they're going to fly a little straighter. They're not going to be crashing down as much. If they do, maybe I can pen the deck. If they don't, then they're just going to cause all these mild, harmless things. Whereas if you actually are able to do an aft deck pen, you can certainly cause some damage. 
what I'm trying to do now is make sure I get as much damage and stability piled on top of this warship whilst she's unable to fire, so that by the time she is able to fire, she won't actually be able to do much with accuracy. There she goes. She now detected me. She won't be able to do much with accuracy because she's fighting to keep the ship upright in the first place. And considering she's already flooding, it might actually be working out quite well. I know that I can slow down the cruise speed. I'm intentionally not doing that. Because the slower I am, the less of a debuff they get to target fast speed, which is currently about 80%. You can see their damage instability is 49.8, so just about maximum what it can be. So once again, um, the AI doesn't really get too much of an opportunity to uh, A, deal a whole lot of damage, and B, deal it accurately. What I'm also hoping for is more flooding, so the ship's going to be listing. If she does that, if she's going to be tilting left or right, port or starboard, the ship is simply going to be unable to bring its guns to bear accurately, and potentially bring them able to bear at all. This time we're 13 kilometers out. We can see occasional high explosive shells going in, originating from the 8.9 inch guns, which are Mark IV as opposed to Mark 315s, and that's why these things have more accuracy. Now they are also slightly longer barrel, which of course also helps. Now as this battleship is fighting for its life, I'm trying to bypass it and go directly at the transports. So far, I've scored 80 hits, doing about 9k damage, 8.6. Uh, they haven't scored a single hit yet. But probably as I'm saying that, they'll do that in the next 20 seconds or so. That seems to be my luck. Now, I really wonder how much structural integrity they're going to have, uh, i.e. bulkheads. So, whether it's going to be worth it to go HE. But, considering the rate of destruction, I think we don't need my explosive much on these targets. I'm happy to see Maya and Banyo back. Because, especially Maya, I think she got hit by a couple of mines, causing almost the full destruction of the ship. The shipyard has been hard at work bringing her back, and she's once again out there fighting the good fight, dealing a lot of damage to the Suplingenberg, which has less than a percent chance to hit me. It's $184 million a warship, contrast that to the Maya, which is 131. So I'm sailing around the 260 million of warship. Um, and it's working. Because these guys, coincidence 3 rangefinder, 23 knot speed. It is almost 60,000 tons. But, yeah. You can kind of predict how this is going to end up. Every now and then I do still try to make peace with the Austro-Hungarians. I do still try to make peace with the British. But nobody really seems to be that eager to go to peace. <clears throat> Why are my guns still rangefinding? We really shouldn't be. Get the secondaries on that. Shouldn't be much of an issue for them. Or do we just... Yeah, no, we can get some decent numbers with the 8-inch guns. Although, I mean, a 15-inch gun against a transport is absolute overkill, but it is funny when it hits. If it hits. 12% chance? Yeah. Are these things packing torpedo launchers? Should I be worried? Yes, they are. There and there. So, the AI definitely wisening up and mounting torpedo launchers on the ships. I don't expect them to have a great lot of range, but just to be on the safe side, I will take some evasive action. Considering that if they are, in fact, throwing out torpedoes at massive ranges, I'd rather not be there when those things come close. I have, in the last episodes, uh, sorry, no, the last off-screen battles, taken a few torpedo hits. Because some of the British warships are armed with torpedo launchers that are using electric torpedoes. They don't leave a wake, they don't give you a warning, and they hit really hard. So some of my ships, despite my best efforts, despite having sonar 2 on these ships, they're just not getting enough warning. They're just not getting enough detection on the torpedo. And you can really only see them the moment that they're on top of you. Which uh, usually is way too late. So if you're facing an enemy that has that, that has those really sneaky torps, and you suspect that they have them, 
you suspect that they fired them, just start zigzagging or do a 90 degree course change and you should be fine. Even without sonar, even without hydro. Make yourself a very unpredictable target and you should be fine. Now let's finish off this battleship and let's call it a day. They can definitely not see me. Their radar is unavailable, i.e. they don't have one. Enhanced loading, 20 inch torpedoes, cap ballistic, and cap ballistic one. Anti-flood, three reinforced bulkheads, two standard bulkheads, cramped quarters. 45% crew loss. Oh, should have mentioned that before. <clears throat> I didn't realize half your crew is dead. Basically, it means I need to make, what, two or three more casualties and the ship will just surrender. This is why you do not bring cramped quarters. Bad plan. And it will cost you the ship. Which means I don't need to get a full kill. I just need to get a crew kill. And that will also end the ship. Okay, now we can slow down the cruise. Surprised we're still only getting a... There she goes. 14, 15% accuracy. But it's enough. Suplingenberg surrendered due to high casualties. And that's 3,900... Sorry, 3,295 victory points versus none. Progress. Finally, the war is over. The British and myself have signed an agreement. Now, um, they are offering up... Well, they're not strictly offering up. Uh, I'm going to take a bunch of territory from them or suggest that I do. I can go up to $696 million. They still got a ton. Good lord. British Somaliland... Hmm, could be interesting because of its position in the world. I'm also thinking that uh, the British Falkland Islands give me a position near South America. Fiji, I don't think is that useful. It's mostly going to be a way to get rid of the British more in my area. Could I just get the British Antilles? We suggest that I don't care for any of the battleships and I will take the SGSSI whatever the hell that is yeah I got them and we're blockading the Austro Hungarians excellent mark 220s that's not exactly what I was hoping for but it's a start how's this invasion going 21% we're going backwards but the Austro-Hungarians were getting helped by the Brits. I suspect that will end. Because the British are no longer at war with anybody right now. So this means that their army should pull out of this fight. It's not their fight anymore. So those 118,000 defenders are going to leave. Meaning that then we might be able to push in and finish off the Austro-Hungarian territory of Croatia. Which really leaves me wondering. Kataro. Is that... Is that here? It almost feels like it falls within my region. But I guess it's just shy. What happens to the Austro-Hungarian nation if they have no access to ports? What happens then? I have no idea. I, they at least rebranded. They got a new flag, which is nice. As for the British territory that I got, uh, I was unable, unable to find whatever else I had, but I got the British Antilles. So that means I have now uh, Bridgetown as well as St. George's. This is a port for 40,000. This is a port for 42,000. The British Antilles together are good for another income of 650 million. Sadly, no oil, but we'll just have to make do with that as is. They still, of course, have some more areas like the Grand Bahamas. Would have been nice to get that, but it's probably outside of my range. Georgetown and the Cayman Islands, not exactly that interesting. It barely has any strategic revenue or financial revenue as well as a fairly small port. Um, Jamaica... Jamaica would be nice to get. That's a big port. And a very healthy economy. 
But, well, not right now. So, that leaves my focus squarely on the Austro-Hungarians. Or, well, whatever else we should be calling them right now, because they have neither Austria nor Hungary. Do I have a ship here? Oh, hello. Not sure why the Amagiri is out there. As for my ships, some back in action, finally. They've been out of action for long enough. The Divine Roadside, 1% damage. She's going to be joining the fight in one month. Uh, I just don't know if there's anything left to fight. Because, no. The Austro-Hungarians have zero ships. Nothing. Interestingly, considering everything that's going on with them, they're still very content. And they have an, an economy of 26 billion. <clears throat> wow. Okay. United States, 1.1 1 .1 trillion, 806, 822, and I'm on 133. Still, I feel like I've done okay in the world, considering what I started with and what I have now. If I would have gotten British Somaliland, I would have... I would have just gotten British Somaliland. Not actually any ports. Or sorry, no, the port of uh, Berbera is over there. Which apparently the British are stationing nine battleships at. Yeah, I, I understand. Because once you have... Oh, I should have taken this. Here's why. I already control Gibraltar. If I'm at war with somebody and I don't like them, I can lock down the Strait of Gibraltar. Like I have done for the Austro-Hungarian Empire. If I also position like the Divine Broadside and maybe some escorts here... There's no way in and out of the med, uh, out, of, out of the med, for any power that tries to bypass my ships. Everything will get intercepted. I like it. So now we just wait until either a new opponent arises, uh, which right now isn't that likely, or until such a time as when the war with Austria-Hungary ends. As for the final bit of this episode, let's refit the Yamashiros. I am building, finally, the new Yamatos, which are armed with 16-inch guns. The Yamashiros are armed with 12s. Like I said, they've been serving me okay, but I need something a little bigger. I'm thinking 15, 16, something to that effect. The challenge will be to actually make these things work, because the hull is pretty narrow, and uh, there's not... That much that I can do about that, I believe. Well, no, you can still up the beam. Yeah, you can do that. I'm not sure why it says the ship is overweight. I don't believe it is. Anyway, um, these are packing a reload of 37.9 seconds. I have an okay punch, but I want something a little bigger. I can also install quads on them now, all the way up to the quad 18s which is definitely not going to fit within the hull specs. It's too big of a ship. Or rather, too small of a ship, too big of a shell. Now these have Generation 1 radar, they got the better turning rates, they got everything that I want. Oil, I can't upgrade. Diesels, I can't upgrade. Yeah, making this fit is going to be tricky. I might have to reduce their operational range, I guess. So let's remove all the turrets. That was the 12s. That's the 12 Mark V. Well, they didn't have the 12 Mark V. They had the 12 Mark IV. The 12 Mark V is going to reload... Oh, sorry, that is the 12 Mark V. Um, the game has already upgraded that, of course, in the stats, but I didn't have those at the time. So let's see, if I go to 15-inch... I don't think it's going to fit at all. But it would be interesting. Why do you not sit there? Do you only accept something smaller there? Wow. The hell? Oh, you, you do want to sit there. Okay. So... It does want to sit there, that's weird. Can I change the secondary tower? Because what I'm currently sporting is a modern secondary tower 5. 
If I go to a tall secondary tower 4, my base accuracy is 16 and a half. It's going to go down from 21. But it saves me a lot of displacement. 11 long range accuracy down to 7. Yeah, why not? Let's change the ship up a bit. Ship still classed as overweight, but if I pull this thing in, it should fit. The problem is now going to be the forward weight offset. Uh, we're going to have to push this back. Push this back. Push the whole front tower back. Oh, sorry. The secondary tower is attached to the front. Yep. And now it isn't. Citadel's too big. Push this back. Now it fits. 6.8% four weight offset, though. I don't want to move these turrets back too far. Because if I do that, it's going to cause issues. So, I can either put more weight on the stern, or try and reduce some armor on the bow. And the bow armor currently is 6.5, which I really don't want to remove that much of. Because if I do that and I position myself as bow in, it's not going to go that well. Anyway, this ship now has a very good amount of firepower. It used to have 9 12-inch barrels. It now has 12 15-inch barrels. They're only Mark 3s. They're not as good as I would like. And the front offset... That's the percent and change. It's not that bad. Save that. And let's get those things refit. As for the lost secondaries, I don't think that they're going to be that much of an issue. Because ideally, heavy cruisers, light cruisers, destroyers, they take care of the smaller ships. If you're facing a transport, then yes, you might want to use a 5-inch secondary. But generally, I only start shooting transports when the main ships are dead. Which means that by that time, the main guns will be available to target even the smaller ships. So, given all that, I should be able to make this ship work in her new configuration. It's just that they're going to be out of commission for four months as they're getting their new gear. As it turns out, it isn't that big of a deal because those ships are all currently undergoing repair. Seven months and three months for the Katsuragi and the Yamashiro herself. So by the time that these ships get repaired in three months, then I can refit this one. I can start refitting that one in seven months. It'll all work out. And in 12 months, I'll also have a couple of new ships sporting 16-inch guns. Hopefully, by the time the research has caught up, and I'll be able to start putting Mark IV 16-inchers on there, Mark IV 15-inchers. I don't know. I don't have that much to research. I've completed cruiser designs. I've completed submarine designs. It's going to slowly but steadily start completing more and more objectives. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I'm uh, hoping for another peace treaty with the Austro-Hungarians soon. I just don't think they have much to give, so it might be a monetary one, and I don't exactly need more money. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon for more.